now I'll share again. So, hello everybody. Welcome to the uh, second edition of the um, Jenkins Youth Experience Special Interest Group. Um, hey Jeremy, I think it's not sharing right now for some reason. No, I have to reshare, so let me do that again. So, let's just do a quick review of the agenda. Um, so, first of all, anybody is welcome to suggest topics. So, if you want to, please go ahead and interrupt me. But I think since this is a fairly new SIG, and I think Alex, this is the first time you're joining, it'd be good if everybody just does a quick round of introductions so we know who's who. I wanted to give a quick update. Um, recently, I made a statement about Blue Ocean on both on the developers mailing list. Um, I also repeated that statement at the Jenkins Contributor Summit and at DevOps World, Jenkins World. So I'd just like to spend a minute or two on that. Um, then over to Joe. Joe's going to talk about the CDS Slack channel, um, some documents he's created to track some of the resources. Felix is going to talk about the uh, UI revamp strategy. Then Joe's going to show a little bit of his designs and his processes. Felix is going to um, talk a little bit about replacing the internal JS build tool with Webpack. And then um, it seems we have a Google Summer of Code project idea from Sladen Means that I think Alec just added. Anybody else want to add anything, or is this good? I think uh, that's good. If we can uh, just pass through all these topics, it will right. go really so nice. Let's just do a super quick introduction, because uh, I saw Alex and Sladen both weren't here last time. So my name is Jeremy Harkey. I'm, I'm the leader of this special interest group. I'm also professionally, I'm a product manager working at CloudBees. I'm responsible for Jenkins and for the CloudBees Jenkins distribution. Within CloudBees, the foundation team, which is one of the main engineering teams working on Jenkins and the security team all underneath my product management. Um, and well, one of my special interests is replacing the Jenkins UX. I mean, it's been my goal since I joined CloudBees, and I'm really happy that it's slowly starting to move forward. So I'm going to ask the next person would be, in my list would be Felix, if you could introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Felix Queiroga. Um, I'm a front-end developer in CloudBees, and I will be, well, the developer, the developer from CloudBees that will be implementing and aligning with the community on the on the new, the new UI changes. Okay, Joe's next in my list. Hello there, a couple of you I have not met before uh, on the call today. My name is Joe Brugan. I'm a product designer at CloudBees, um, working on Jenkins, um, and I think. I think that's about it. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about what's going on in the slides later on in the call today. Nice to meet you all. Okay, Oleg is next in my list, please. Hi all. Uh, yeah, I'm a Jenkins core maintainer and recently I joined the Jenkins board. Uh, so my personal interest is to improve uh, Jenkins uh, UI UX and to ensure that it happens smoothly uh, for current plugin maintainers and Jenkins users. So that's why um, uh, I joined uh, this special interest group and uh, I tried to follow it if uh, possible. All right, next on my list is Avaristo. Hey, hello there. Uh, I'm Avaristo. I've been a software engineer in CloudBees for around three years, working in the foundation team, mm -hmm. uh, who is the team working in, in Jenkins. Uh, and as I've got a past as a front-end engineer as well, so that's why I'm interested in all this as well. Nice to meet you. Next to my list is Adrian. Hi, everyone. So my name is Adrian. I'm working for Clubis for five years and been in uh, Jenkins community for almost 10 years now. 
and I'll be, I will be joining on, uh, on DC14 uh, plugins to improve uh, Jenkins uh, UI. Okay, next on my list is Parker. Hey, I'm Parker. Um, product marketing work closely with Jeremy um, on all things Jenkins and um, uh, the proprietary cloud-based Jenkins solutions as well. All right, next in my list is Sladen, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yep, sure, perfect. So I've actually, I participated um, in the community bridge project with Jenkins, so I'm a relatively um, new developer. So I, my main interest was to come in, maybe try and help with the UI UX of Jenkins. So that's why I joined CSIT. Uh, hopefully I can contribute and make a difference. Okay, great, welcome, everybody's welcome. Um, next on my list is Alex. Yeah, my name's <clears throat> Alex Earl. I've uh, been involved in Jenkins for some time. I'm mainly here as kind of just an observer. I was recently uh, elected to the Jenkins board, so I'm just kind of trying to understand what all the different SIG groups are doing. All right. Yeah, congratulations on that, Alex, and thanks for turning up. The last one I've got on my list is Carl. Hey there, my name is Carl Schultz. I'm out of North Carolina in the US. Uh, I am a software engineer at CloudBees, working mostly on pipeline stuff, and uh, have had an interest in the, the evolution of the Jenkins user interface and user experience since joining the company and becoming involved with Jenkins. Okay, did I miss anybody? I'm just a bit hard to track on soon. No. All right, well, that's great. We've uh, welcome everybody. So, just very briefly, because we've got a lot of points to cover, but um, I think the week before last, um, I made a statement on the developers group about Blue Ocean and the status of Blue Ocean. So, for those that haven't read this, I mean, the statement basically says that Blue Ocean didn't reach its original objectives. So the original objectives of Blue Ocean was that it would replace the whole of the Jenkins UX. Whereas in reality, it managed to create a pretty good UI for visualizing Jenkins pipelines. It did a reasonable job at making it possible to develop basic pipelines in the UX, even though that was limited. But it never managed to spread out from there and start extending across the whole UX. So uh, the main reasons for this were partly changes in cloud view strategy and changes in resourcing. And secondly, the fact that um, the fact that extensibility wasn't tackled to start with and obviously it ran into issues once it moved out of pipelines because it had to deal with the fact that there were lots of plugins out there um, that could all contribute their own little bit of UX. So the state so the, the current state of the Blue Ocean is that at least as far as CloudBees is concerned, we're not developing this further. We are maintaining it in the sense that we'll obviously do security fixes, we'll do bug fixes that are high priority. Community PRs that make sense will get merged. We're planning to do a release of it, hopefully once every month or so with fixes, but no major features will get added. I made a similar statement at the Jenkins Contributor Summit and at Jenkins World as well, because that was the next week. And I also talked about the new UI project, which is obviously the subject of this SIG. Um, think people were happy, some people were quite worried about Blue Ocean going away. But I think people are happy that a new UI is being built, however, and I think it's important to be clear that Blue Ocean will remain in place until something is there to replace it. So it's not like we're pulling it out of the project, we're just not building new functionality on it. Um, my feeling personally is that, I mean, we have pushed Blue Ocean very hard, so we need to at least maintain it and keep it alive until we're ready to replace it. We can't simply pull the plug on it, you know, just because it didn't achieve its objectives. We 
think it's reasonable that we stop investing strongly in it, but I mean, we need to keep it, you know, functioning because most of the training, you know, a lot of the images, whatever, all based on Blue Ocean. So we, at least as Cloudbees, have, you know, a role to play there. Any comments on this? So, silence. Okay, so that was my update. I mean, the nice thing was in Lisbon, I mean, a lot of people were very enthusiastic about the new UX, happy to hear that, you know, things were moving forward there, that uh, big things were still happening in Jenkins. So. That was uh, good news. All right, uh, over to the section four general miss. Joe, you want to uh, go ahead? Sure. Hey, good morning, everybody. For those of you that joined after I said this earlier, I'm a little bit under the weather, so if I have to sporadically pause and sneeze, don't take that personally, please. Um, but hi, everybody. Uh, a couple of items to move through here. Uh, just since this is our second instance of this of this SIG meeting, uh, just some housekeeping stuff. Uh, item A there is that in the previous call, in the first call, we had a consensus that we would have conversation in between SIG meetings in a dedicated Slack channel in the CDF uh, Slack organization. So if you scroll up in this document on screen, which you don't have to do right now, Jeremy, you'll see notes where we, we sort of came to that conclusion. Um, unfortunately, Slack doesn't allow me to go and uh, and send a direct link, at least not that I've seen, uh, to join that. So if you just shoot me an email at, at jbrugan at cloudbees.com, I'll get you added right away, no questions asked, and, and we'll get everyone in there, and that's where we'll host conversation between these meetings. Um, and then item 4B there. Uh, could you open that one up real quickly, Jeremy? Yeah. So. No, no worries. Item 4B, I was trying to send a screenshot of the Slack this is, it's a very boring Slack at the moment because nobody's in it. But yeah, we, we ju I just created the channel a couple days ago, so no one's there yet. That's where we'll host our, our conversation moving forward, though. Um, so what's this, this? Awesome. Um, so what this uh, document on screen is here is, is we know that we're going to have these meetings. Uh, they're currently scheduled for every other week. We're going to have our, our conversations in Slack. But, uh, you know, uh, things can get a, a little bit uh, messy with, with a bunch of different locations for communication in the, in the community sometimes. You know, we have mailing lists and we have our Slack channel now and we have this and that. So this is one document where all resources that are created uh, in relation to this project will just be listed in this document. I'll throw this in the Slack channel as well as, as the topic for the Slack channel. So anytime you need to reference anything related to this SIG, it should be linked here. Uh, meeting agenda notes, uh, Jenkins UI revamp document that we'll look at in a little bit, uh, header bar with breadcrumbs design that we'll look at in a little bit. As we create more stuff, we'll put it on this document. So very simple resource. That's that. Let me close this. And then you'd like me to, or we're going to move on to the Jenkins yes. UI revamp overview, which is Felix's one. Yeah, you want to okay. speak to that one, Felix? Yeah, can you open that up, Jeremy, please? Yeah. Okay. So we've for, created a document where we summarize basically our what our approach will be to the project, what we consider it on scope, out of scope. We have also done some technical analysis, what they will, will, and we listed some of the difficulties we we think we are going to have, we did a, a, a brief analysis on the current state of CSS in, within Jenkins. We listed a bit of the problems we think we are going to have with plugins. It's a high level uh, document. It doesn't go into really, really big detail uh, on any topic, but uh, it's definitely a guideline. And, and if and if anybody, I encourage everybody to take a look at it, read it, and if, if there's something that seems off, any feedback on the strategy, any feedback on any point, please do tell, create a pull up the comment, and we will discuss it. For some of the examples I, I mentioned here is, uh, can you scroll down a bit? 
Yeah. For example, here I, I say it's a, a bit down. In the yeah. yeah, for example, here plugin impact, I list, uh, uh, we, for example, we have a, a section dedicated to issues, possible issues with plugins, which problems I, for, I see that can happen with plugins. Uh, it's more of this is going to happen, we need to decide what to do, and basically also a way to raise a discussion of how to approach stuff. Is uh, this document public? Because if so, it would be great uh, to get it linked. It's uh, public. Uh, everybody can comment on it and add suggestions. And it's linked. On, and there's a public link on the, on the both on the, on the order uh, order of the day uh, on the meeting. Oh yeah, I see it. Sorry. Link. Yeah, and mm -hmm. also on the Jenkins Seek resources that um, Joe just created. If you want, I can go into. Lots mm -hmm. of det into detail about all the sections on the document, but I think it's mm -hmm. better if everybody takes a look at it offline because we, we are quite packed <laughs> now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. That's a really awesome resource uh, for, for this SIG as well. Thank you, Felix. Thank you. All right, so should we move to point five, which is the first actual designs we're going to see? So sure. Yeah, if you could open that uh, slide deck up. So for a little bit more context on this, something that we want to do, um, ideally in, in every one of these um, twice monthly SIG meetups, is present uh, a little bit of, uh, of design and, and the redesign of, of a new component within the Jenkins interface. And the reason we're doing that is because this, while these components are being uh, actually designed and implemented as part of a, in a CloudBees project, uh, we're, we're leaning pretty heavily and, and we'll really cherish uh, community feedback to inform these designs and then of course how we implement them. That's why everything is being, so, being done so openly here. So this uh, first deck is a little bit pedantic just because this is the first time we're doing this. There's a lot here. And I won't read through everything at this point. Of course, this is all linked for you on all those in all those locations for you to check out. Um, but let's go ahead and, and do that with slide two. Let's jump in there, Jeremy. Okay. So just laying this out because I figure probably the vast majority of people who will look at these things won't be on these calls, right? So this is what the SIG is, setting the expectation for these. Hopefully we'll have one of these every other week, as you mentioned. Uh, and each one will focus on one component within the Jenkins interface, sort of outline some of the design logic that's going into that component's redesign, and then uh, details about how and where to provide feedback. Uh, the takeaway from this slide is Jenkins is, excuse me, Clubbies is obviously working on a visual refresh of Jenkins. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's, that's the overview here. You can go to slide three. Since we have so much to, to cover in today's agenda, which is awesome, I'm not gonna redo every single thing, um, but there are some valuable takeaways and some valuable notes in here for you to reference after this call. Um, thinking about how the Jenkins brand will continue to evolve through the interface, through this redesign specifically, um, and how it relates to the cloud-based brands. These are two very distinct brands as they should be. Uh, the goal of the project of the, of the CSS refresh is is not to bring them any closer together. In fact, it's to strengthen the independent Jenkins brand and, and strengthen the Jenkins product and improve usability, of course, uh, through the design. We can jump to slide four, I think. Yeah. And then a couple uh, really uh, important points here as well. In addition to introducing um, a really modern interface in Jenkins for, the, for everyone who uses it, um, in the global community here, we also want to improve basic visual accessibility. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, um, excuse me, there are a lot of interactions inside of Jenkins that suffer from poor visual accessibility, could be made a lot better with some very straightforward tweaks. So that's a priority in addition to making things look better and therefore feel, and therefore be a little bit more intuitive, they will also be a little bit more accessible and follow more modern web standards for visual accessibility. Yeah, I have a question about that. Uh, sure. So we are in the progress uh, um, discussing one uh, potential JSOC project, uh, which is about uh, mode for colorblind people. 
uh, would it be something interesting uh, with regards to this topic? Uh, so, I mean, uh, when we design the UI, etc., uh, supporting additional modes uh, to improve accessibility for particular categories of people who may have different requirements. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so is so sorry, Oleg. Is the question sort of uh, do we want to pair up uh, resources on these two projects or? Certainly, uh, we should be creating both to the same uh, accessibility standards, right? Um, right? But can you can you clarify yeah. the question? Sorry. Yeah. So if this uh, project happens, of course, it will be coordinated in uh, the SIG, and I uh, would be happy uh, to get uh, more contributors involved. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, about accessibility is whether you assume that there will be additional modes. Because we cannot have one mode for colorblind people, uh, because yeah, colorblind just uh, needs uh, has specific requirements which we would need to deliver. Yeah, I thought right I, now is. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, somebody else, and I'll jump in. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was me, uh, Oleg. So <clears throat> one of the points I say in the strategy document is that mm -hmm. uh, it's not the scope of this project. Mm -hmm. to provide a certain level of accessibility. We are not going to say, well, okay, we are going to have a double A interface. No, we are just going to assume mm -hmm. as long as we work on components, we'll try to improve it. Um, okay. For example, one of the key items for accessibility for people with uh, different, I don't know, color impairments. I don't know what the proper word in English is, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, with the difficulties perceiving different colors is that mm -hmm. you, for example, you don't have you don't depend on color to convey a state, for example. You don't just change the color of a button whenever you mm -hmm. hover onto it. You you make another effect, a transition, an animation, underline a, a link. Mm -hmm. That we will take into account. Um, I, I, but we are not going to target a specific mm -hmm. level. And But yeah, we still welcome if there's mm -hmm. this, uh, this other project for color, um, yeah. But improve colorblind support, please. Uh, we can mm -hmm. put, put those people in contact with us. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So, we won't be able to solve all accessibility mm -hmm. issues, certainly within the scope of this project. Um, however, mm -hmm. whenever we're redesigning a component, just to reiterate, whenever we're redesigning a component, we have that opportunity to make sure our typography, mm -hmm. our color palette is accessible. Um, wherever we can, we will. We will fix uh, and improve accessibility in that regard. But it, it won't be a total overhaul yet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something we need to work toward. That. Yeah, that's uh, perfectly fine. And yeah, if uh, we just retain uh, the same level of extensibility as it's available in the current UI, I guess it would address the story anyway, because somebody w would be able to apply a custom theme and that's it. Can you, can you repeat that last bit? Uh, so if we retain uh, the same level of uh, extensibility like we have now, so when mm -hmm. basically everybody can uh, replace CSS and uh, add additional JavaScript to Jenkins web interface and basically redesign it entirely if needed. Uh, so if we retain these features after the redesign, uh, I think it will address this case. Yeah, certainly the intention is to mm -hmm. maintain, as you say, maintain extensibility as we're redesigning these components. We're starting off with a slightly um, less complex component, which we'll look at in just a second. Um, but yes, that's that's part of the goal here for sure. Um, the second item on the screen there is uh, just a, a note about working toward a Jenkins design system. This doesn't have like a formal name yet um, because uh, we don't need, a, need to be confusing anyone thinking it's a different product or a different project or anything like that. It's something that'll be built organically as we move through component designs I think we can jump to slide five. Uh, so it, real quickly, just to address, Oleg, I see you have a comment there. This is Jenkins Design Language V2. Uh, so there was a, and still is documented on the web, the Jenkins Design Language, um, which is be, uh, slightly before my time at CloudBees, but from what I understand, an initiative to create a, a design language, a design system of sorts, based on the Blue Ocean interface. Um, Obviously, following you know Jeremy's update there about the future of Blue Ocean and and uh, Clubby's stance toward it and how we're maintaining it moving forward, 
yes, this is n not a V2, but this is a different initiative um, mm -hmm. just because we're taking a different approach with this project. So when you see reference, if you do to Jenkins design language around the web, that yeah. is separate. Um, yeah, just to clear up any confusion. Yeah, right. Okay. And probably we should tear down uh, Jenkins design language resources. Because we I even think have so too, a Jenkins too. IO website. Yeah, sorry, we even have GitHub IO website for that, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Yes, I agree yeah, that um, that should be. Sorry about that also. Uh, you may see also on the, when we refer to the scope of what we think the project should cover mm -hmm. on the strategy document. Um, while we would like to be able to provide a place, like a sort of storybook, a place where we could list designs, components, and develop those in isolation so people could see all the components separated without going to the Jenkins instance. This is not something we can commit to do right now. It's something that we would like. It may happen, but yeah, it's not. Even, we are not sure. It's I can, we uh, we are not saying it's going to happen. It's something that it's a possibility, but our focus is to to deliver changes to the Jenkins UI and not to create and move towards a design system, but not to create a design system. Our fo focus is delivering the UI changes. Yeah, so so to, to clarify, and I think we're on the same page there, Felix, right? When I say working toward a Jenkins design system, it's not to say um, I'm a designer promising you that you'll have a design system to reference uh, starting tomorrow or anything like that. It's just to say that as we move through these design improvements, we'll be thinking about them cohesively as part of a larger system of sorts, which isn't being formalized right now, but that they will be, uh, de design decisions will be intentional and, and component designs will relate to one another so that they feel like one cohesive system. Um, but no, we're not, we're not creating or shipping anything like that at the moment, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we better jump to slide five there for time, sorry. So uh, I mentioned that we're, we're sort of starting off small. This is our second SIG meeting ever. Um, and the first uh, design that we want to introduce for feedback here, and keep in mind we can, we can do feedback in the call here. That's totally fine. But we also have our Slack channel. And feedback is welcome anytime after, after this call as well. Um, the first one we want to look at here is the header bar with breadcrumbs. So uh, throughout the course of this visual refresh, really this is CSS centric. Uh, and therefore functionality will remain largely the same. This is about aesthetics right now. Um, but this will allow us to do to achieve some of the stuff we mentioned earlier, like improving visual accessibility with a new color palette, modern iconography, um, things like that. So just running through these bullets here, imagine this is a fairly straightforward choice for our first one. Uh, not super controversial because this one, since functionality will be remaining largely the same, won't really have too much impact on, on user workflow and won't have too many plugin implications um, and impacting people's day to day right off the bat. So slightly less controversial, but you know, let me know if something, let us know if something stands out as problematic and, and you know, this is the sort of cut dialogue that will in, go back to inform the design, of course. Um, I mentioned all colors and typography, since we have the opportunity to do so, are being measured by modern visual accessibility standards, uh, even though we're not, you know, fixing Jenkins accessibility for lack of a better expression right now, there's an opportunity to do that in small ways here. So we're taking advantage of that. Um, this, this component and other components in future SIG calls that we share are also being designed to scale down well to mobile. I don't have that for you this week and I'll share that in the next sync alongside some other designs. And really, this is this is fairly straightforward. We're looking at a, a few states here. Um, so on the very top page, they're looking at just our our Jenkins landing, right? If you're if you're brand new into the interface, for example, uh, very straightforward. Everything should look the same, or excuse me, everything should work the same way, um, but look slightly better. In that middle screenshot there, we got a comment come through. I'll look at that comment in just a sec. In that middle screenshot there, uh, we have the autofill, autofill selection state for the search bar. Um, so you see that the selected autofill item, this is a slight tweak here. 
um, in addition to um, the very light color uh, fill that's applied to each item as you sort of, uh, excuse me, as you sort of scroll down through that list, uh, you also have a little icon indicator on the right there. This is a common technique for autofill lists like this in modern UIs to improve accessibility. Uh, and then some minor adjustments to how we do breadcrumbs as well. Although the logic of breadcrumbs uh, can certainly be improved, that's a bit out of scope for this effort right now. So again, just visual improvements at the moment. And uh, again, this is, this is a fairly straightforward one. You know, in future weeks and months, there will be um, designs reintroduced for additional components that are gonna be a lot more controversial uh, a lot more confusing potentially. What does this mean for my workflow? What does this mean for XYZ plugin? Uh, and that's where we're really going to get into the meat of, of conversation, I think. But your feedback is, and I speak to everyone, of course, feedback is more than welcome uh, here and in Slack after for this first component. Let me see. There was a chat in here. Yeah, and that's just me saying it looks oh. good. Okay, thank you. Cool. And it looks simple, clean. That's the goal. That's certainly the goal. A lot, lot of room for improvement, but you know, we, we, we want to be very intentional about how we go about improving these design, uh, designed elements piece by piece. Yeah. Anybody else? May I one question about uh, the technology under the hood uh, of uh, new UI components. This summer we had a pretty successful Google Summer of Code project, which was de uh, devoted to um, uh, working on plugin UI improvements and basically to, uh, was using React and included standard uh, React uh, libraries into the Jenkins plugin uh, to have some controls, etc. Uh, what is uh, the current consideration uh, for this project? Uh, do you want to use existing technology or do you want to create something from scratch dedicated to Jenkins? Felix, is this something you could speak a little more to? Yeah, maybe this question I, is uh, too early, but uh, yeah, it would be nice if, uh, to know if there are any additional uh, insights or plans about the tech. Oleg, uh, hi Oleg. I, sorry, but I don't think I understood your question. Uh, do you uh, mm -hmm. do you mean if we are going to add existing CSS, existing CSS classes, or? or mm. add new ones, add new files, remove the old ones? No, is, is uh, the CSS part uh, is quite fine. Uh, yeah, Joe was talking about uh, new controls. So mm. I just wanted to understand what is the plan for new controls. Uh, do we want to use standard ones from libraries or do we want to create uh, our own ones? Uh, new, you meant new controls? Yes, new controls. Um, okay. Uh, right now, we, want, we, we don't want to touch any new JavaScript at all. So, mm -hmm. for example, here, um, the, mm -hmm. the search autocomplete widget is, is uh, I think it's done using Yahoo UI. Mm -hmm. it's, it, if, if, uh, if it's for, uh, for me, it's going to, to still be the same. I, I, we, we don't want to touch any JavaScript at all, if it's not 100% needed. So, mm -hmm. Uh, in that regard, the control would be exactly the same. We may add new CSS classes to it to style it, or we may even style it through the Yahoo UI classes. But we, we are not going to uh, alter any behavior or program the search bar again. Is that, does that answer your question? Sorry, I was muted. I might have misspoken there, Oleg. Like if I was talking, if I was talking about different controls, yeah, this is definitely mm -hmm. all about all, all meant to be about styling, and even okay. looking at at that automatic refresh toggle there, right? That's something that uh, just in the past uh, day or so, Felix, uh, you know, we've been talking about it, and we've said, hey, you know, that's probably not the best way. We should probably just since this is CSS focused, uh, just maintain a text link, and so that's a piece of the design that I will be mm -hmm. updating and we'll share back with you all. Yeah, regarding, uh, regarding that, I believe that it will be removed soon. So there is a pending uh, yep, that's true. A project by Daniel Beck uh, about getting rid of that. I heard that yesterday as well. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. and so that's great. Um, and and I will be updating the design to reflect. That said, Oleg, if if there's any 
Yeah, yeah, and that's the point, uh, one of the points of these meetings. If you think there's any project or ongoing some of code project or something that will change any of these UI controls, do tell us and we will look into it and we will communicate as soon as possible with the people working on those changes, of course. Yeah. All right, so in the interest of time, one more quick comment from somebody else on this, or should we move on? Come off, I guess. Okay, so providing feedback again, like we said, there's the uh, these continuous delivery foundation Slack is a great way. Obviously, you can also do it in whatever other possible way, but best if we centralize it in the Slack channel, or if you can't get there in the Jenkins user experience mailing list. Yeah, I hate to make you all email me to get into Slack. It's just Slack won't let me do a direct link, but obviously no questions asked. Email me and I'll, I'll throw you in there and we'll go from there. All right, so thank you, Joe. Um, next. next point. Um, let's quickly do the replacement of JS Builder with Webpack, Felix. So we still have time for the other points. So no more than five minutes, please. No, no, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to to share anything visually or code. Um, Jenkins uses, uh, well, the Jenkins ecosystem uses a tool called JS Builder. Uh, well, a family of tools called JS Builder, JS Modules, etc. To as the way to build the UI elements, uh, for, sorry, for the UI assets, say JavaScript, CSS, and stuff like that. Uh, some people have expressed uh, some trouble using that tool. Uh, those tools are custom. Are they introduce a maintainability burden and are, have not the best documentation. They also come from, from my understanding, um, they come from a time where the JavaScript ecosystem was not as mature as it is today. Thankfully, things have evolved in these years, and now there's there are more industry standard tools like Webpack that will that allows having an actual build and compilation toolchain for JavaScript, CSS, and evil bundling stuff like fonts, SVG icons, things like that. What we are going to I've been working on a proof of concept uh, that we, that would replace the JS Builder used in the Jenkins core repo, important just on, only on the Jenkins core repo, with Webpack. Webpack is the more most more widely used module bundler in the JavaScript ecosystem right now. Every front-end developer knows how to use it. It has great support. It works works like a charm. And it allows, uh, it will allow us on the Jenkins project to add new features really easily. Uh, I will give a few examples. For example, it will be trivial to add a TypeScript to the Jenkins project once we, we replace JS Builder with Webpack. There is also going to be a more immediate benefit, which would be um, we, we can start using a tool called Post CSS which is a tool pr to process CSS, to enhance back back backwards compatibility, uh, optimize the media queries, things like that, that are right now, it's not possible to have to JS Builder. So just to summarize, this is a way to, re to remove a custom piece of infrastructure on the Jenkins project, on the Jenkins core repo, and replace it with a more e widely used tool with better maintenance and that will empower us well and the people working on the Jenkins front end to deliver <coughs> better uh, more changes basically. Yeah I would uh, like to add some bits to that. Yeah your um, evaluation uh, Felix is totally correct. Uh, so Jenkins JS Builder is a historical thing. It was originally created for Jenkins 2.0 when there was new installation manager developed, then it was partially adopted in Lotion and other components. 
But for Jenkins as a project, uh, these components have been always a major burden because yeah, the maintainer of these components from Fenner that he moved on. And basically there was no releases for plugins which bundle the Jenkins JS builder uh, components since uh, the very first releases. Uh, the release flow is not trivial. Uh, on my machine, uh, the builds uh, just fail. Um, and they, if we can uh, get rid of that stuff, it would be really nice. And we have success stories for Webpack. Uh, we have success stories for Pure NPM. Uh, so yeah, if we can uh, move forward to standard technologies, it would be a huge step forward. So I would definitely, I wouldn't be missing any of these technologies uh, because even now we are unable to maintain them basically. Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. I will share the POC. Uh, hopefully, uh, as soon as I can, mm -hmm. uh, as soon as long as as I'm as I'm sure it doesn't break any H T any H T A P H suit or anything, basically. Yeah. Well, do you want to keep uh, API uh, plugins created by JS Builder? Because we have uh, something like ten of them. Uh, plugins work. JS Builder just builds a JavaScript package and, and mm -hmm. plugins are free to use it as any pro other project is and just want to change it on the Jenkins core because the Jenkins core has the most complex uh, mm -hmm. setup of JavaScript and CSS and it's also where, where the... Mm -hmm. Basically, it's on, on a project per project basis. It, changing it on a project shouldn't affect the other projects. Okay. So, in view of time, should we move on to point seven? Google Summer of Code 2020. Slide in. Oh, I like. Yeah, this was actually. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So, yeah, this was actually more of a question. Um, since Jenkins participates in um, Google Summer of Code every almost every year, so um, my question would be that um, can since Oleg and you were discussing in the previous GSOC meeting just before this one, uh, can uh, can we actually uh, put a project for uh, the UI, maybe pick up a component uh, from this, uh, from the entire project and put it in Google Summer of Code so that um, any student can probably uh, take it up and um, implement it. So I would like to know your thoughts on actually picking any one of the um, any one of the topics that were discussed by Joseph in, in, your, in, a, in the slide, for example, and maybe put it as a project? That would be my question. I think it's a great idea. I mean, obviously, it'd have to... I mean, I, I guess Google Summer of Code is four months, isn't it? So it needs to be, you know, big enough, but not too big. Mm -hmm. And somebody would need a mentor, I guess, which would be... Yeah, mentorship is uh, the biggest problem. Because yeah. Yeah, our expectation is that uh, they are at least two mentors in the project, and yeah. it's a pretty big time dedication. So we expect, expect mentors to spend uh, more than five hours per week um, uh, during the entire summer. So it's quite a commitment, uh, but uh, also you can yeah. get uh, really good results out of it. That's why we advertise uh, JSOC and the Jenkins community, and obviously there are. Uh, any thoughts, any ideas which could be uploaded to a GSOC project, uh, it would be nice. I think it's a good idea. I mean, obviously, I can't commit that people on my team will do this, or but I mean, I, I would say that it seems like a good idea. I'm not sure anybody else has any thoughts. Yeah, my only thought is that maybe it, it is a good idea, but if we start, uh, or if the project starts working, on a, a refined design so that uh, per the people working on the project can start uh, actually implementing on those design changes, but not, uh, but they don't need to decide the design or that kind of stuff. But I think that that would be something important. How I, concrete? I'm yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I also agree that it's a really cool idea. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if this is what you were, you were uh, mentioning, Evaristo, if this is similar to that, but I'm, I'm thinking uh, anytime you, you branch out the group um, that's uh, um, implementing a, a certain design, 
it, it can become a little murky as far as how these designs relate to one another and making sure we're having consistent uh, aesthetics and consistent patterns between them. So there might be a little bit of danger there. However, I'm, I mean, personally, I'm, I'm open to talking about this. And even if it's not exactly um, implementing a specific component, it, it could be something even more uh, creative that can contribute back to this project in some way. But uh, it's got me thinking, and I think it's a, a good opportunity. Can someone remind me when this actually occurs? The, oh, next summer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Mentioned yeah, I'm sick. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's a QSNet summer, next summer, but regarding project ideas, uh, we expect uh, to have them published uh, in, in January or February. Okay. Um, we already have some project ideas which are clearly related to the UX special interest group, for example, uh, REST APIs, which would be really important for um, Mm, uh, creating new UIs, uh, we want to automatically generate specifications for them. Then uh, there are projects which are related uh, to user-focused documentation, like pipeline documentation generators. Again, they could be a part of uh, this seek interest uh, in some sense. Uh, but if we had some more projects which are really related to front-end, it would be also nice. So, uh, Slayton, do you think this is something you could uh, bring back up over in the Slack channel and, and, and we could get the conversation rolling on that? Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. I'll join the Slack channel and post it. Thanks. I think Great. also, I mean, ha my question to Oleg Bade is how concrete does it need to be? Does it really, I mean, is joining a team and working on this for four months too vague? Does it have to be really kind of like a wrapped up kind of thing for deliverable yeah. or can it? Yeah, the thing that uh, what you post is a project idea. Uh, and it's up to students uh, to come up with a project proposal and they expect to do so. So the right. idea can be pretty abstract. Um, one thing is that uh, the final project has to be uh, quite detached so that uh, the student uh, can uh, work on that. Uh, that uh, the failure of this GSOC project, uh, which happens, doesn't. Uh, uh, block any other major stories, uh, but uh, right. the idea itself is fine. So it's not just like join the team for three, four months and work on seven or eight different things. It has to be more defined than that. Like uh, f final project, yes. Project ID could be fine, so you can just come up with something. Okay, there will be this uh, new Jenkins. I forgot. Uh, well. Okay, Jenkins does and then push to the zero. But so um, uh, let's create new components for that. It could be a good project idea. Uh, for example, you can just put a few examples of components you would like to get, like calendar control or whatever. And then it's up to the student to come up with a more detailed proposal. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's not something like outsourcing. So. Yeah, yeah you know it. it uh, perfectly. Yeah. So let's move on to point eight because we're running out of time quickly. Um, I guess very quickly we can make an update. We, thanks to, well, a suggestion from Felix and then the work of Oleg, we now have an updated browser compatibility matrix, which is really good because we no longer need to support IE 9 and 10. I think that's the major change, isn't it, Oleg? Yeah, that's it. Uh, there were some other changes, uh, but basically in support levels. Yeah. It uh, doesn't change anything in principle because as long as uh, there are fixes which are submitted and which are reasonable, they would be accepted anyway. Uh, sure. But yeah, it at least unblocks introduction uh, of changes which would uh, break compatibility with all the browsers. Yeah, and I mean, just so everybody's aware, IE10, IE9 is out of support, and IE10 is going out of support in January. Mm -hmm. So by the time any of these changes land, it's quite safe to build them now on IE11 or better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's just move on because we've marketplace for simple theme plugin. Any objections? Can you? Just tell me a bit more what you mean by that. Oleg? Mm, sorry? 
Oh, Marcus Let's Williams. Explain this one a bit more. Um, yeah. Mm, so mm, basically, I have one uh, of pet projects is uh, generator of uh, marketplaces for GitHub IO. So mm. you may have seen that there are some marketplaces, for example, for GitHub actions and for other projects. Mm. Um, and I was just experimenting with uh, universal repository, which allows to create uh, these marketplaces easily, uh, basically powered by Jekyll. And uh, I have two potential applications for Jenkins project. One is pipeline library marketplace. And another one is uh, simple theme plugin marketplace. So a simple theme plugin would just list existing themes uh, with some descriptions, with some links. So it would help users uh, to find uh, these themes and it will also be uh, a place for maintainers uh, to, uh, to put them and to promote them. So that's the idea, nothing really complex inside. I just wanted to, uh, to check whether this is something uh, useful from your point of view or whether it's something which would collide with the stories they seek is working on. Um, I, I, th I think it can be problematic because mm -hmm. it, and I'm not saying it would be, I'm not saying that encouraging. Yeah, I think it would encourage some ability, mm -hmm. but right now the current there is there are no clear guidelines for theming the Jenkins interface right now. Every plugin go uh, does its own thing. They look into they look at the HTML mm -hmm. structure and everything, and boom, they they, do, they apply changes. We are yeah, still going, is, uh... we are going to break themes. So I don't know if it's good for community perception that we to provide a marketplace for simple theme plugins, which mm -hmm. I think can be understood can be taking us endorsing those themes while at the same time breaking the uh, changing the UI and causing some of these themes to break. Yeah, uh, that's a potential risk. So uh, I think that uh, simple theme plugin is widely used at the moment. And for me... Yeah, it's got 20,000 installs or more, I think. Yeah, and for me, it would be also a way to highlight potential compatibility issues. For example, we could use marketplace in order to explicitly document what is a target Jenkins version. So instead of uh, embracing it for any version, and uh, as you said, committing to breaking changes, we could be explicit what is the target version, and then maintainers, when they update the plugins, they can also um, uh, update information in the marketplace so that uh, they explicitly say what is uh, the version they target. So we can actually turn it around and use it for the benefit of the project, uh, even while evolving UI. Okay. Yeah, I see your point. It can work that way. I was, I, I'm, I guess I was a bit afraid because now we know we are going to break plugins. Mm -hmm. We, we probably we're we're really worrying about plugins, and, and if now we need to really worry about themes. Um, how many yeah. things do we need to support? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, well, is there a threshold, a number of downloads uh, from which we start to need to support themes? Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, so now we don't guarantee any kind of uh, theme support as we discussed at the previous meeting. I would rather keep it that way and I'm happy to add proper disclaimers. Um, so, uh, but yeah, if you think that uh, it's something which could coexist. I uh, would try. But yeah. So I, I that's why know. I brought up this topic. I, I personally think it's okay as long as we have like caveats and warnings that, you know, yep. this is changing. Right. I mean, it would be annoying if somebody contributes a big thing and then two months later we break everything and then they didn't know and they're pissed off. Mm -hmm. So we need to be quite clear about it. Okay, so maybe once I have a quick prototype, I will uh, just share it and we can uh, be do it at uh, one of the next meetings. It's definitely not something I'm going to do tomorrow because it's a pet project and I have too many pets. Yeah, and a wife and a baby. <laughs> and a day <Awesome>. job. <laughs> yeah. So we're pretty much out of time. Mm -hmm. So, 
the next meeting would be on the 25th of December, which is not a great date. And the Wednesday after that's the 1st of January. So my, my proposal is that we have four weeks between meetings. Should we stick to this time, which is 1700 CT? Is that anybody object to uh, this the Wednesday, 8th of January? Five o'clock CT, eleven o'clock Eastern. Is it UTC or is it uh, when to whatever local time? Sixteen hundred UTC. Oh. Okay, so yeah, just to make sure what is the preference because otherwise next March uh, our meetings go south. So yeah, the practice and drinks community that we do UTC meetings. Though again, yeah. everything goes south because people still live in their local time zone. Does that mean the meeting's going to be later or earlier? Whatever, just a different time. Uh, that's the problem. So, yeah. But yeah, I think that till March, it's uh, fine to stop for whatever date. Let's work that problem out when we get to it. Because yeah. I, mean, I do have a meeting normally on Wednesday, but I cannot skip from mm. 1800 CT. To, so, anyway, for now. Let's agree the next meetings at this time. And then I will try and add it to the Jenkins events calendar if I get the right permissions. Then. Yeah, I can just edit it for you. But uh, speaking of that, uh, special interest groups and Jenkins usually have seek pages yeah. where information about meetings is documented and it's a source of truth. Okay, if you could yeah. send me a link to an existing one so I can get the structure and work out how to do that. Okay. Now, uh, so it's just a jenkisio slash six. Okay. Uh, I'll send you a link. All right, thank you everybody for joining today. I'm going to stop the recording and say goodbye. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, have a thank good you, Christmas, everybody. everybody. Bye. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Bye.